In this lesson, we're going to clean up the inventory a little bit. We have a problem right now. If we have a lot of items, we have one line for each item. So here is an example of uh, what you might have in the trade screen if you've killed a lot of snakes. We've got several snake skins and snake fang lines. We want to consolidate that so we just have one snake skin line with a quantity, but we also want to keep it so that we can have unique items like weapons have their own individual line. Because in the future we may put enhancements on the weapons so they have to be unique, but things like snake skins don't have to be unique. We're going to start this change by modifying the game item class. We'll add a new property here on line eight. It's a Boolean property and it's is unique. Then we'll change the constructor. We're going to add a new parameter here to accept the is unique value that we want to assign. But we're also going to put this equals false here. So this means if we construct a game item object, if we instantiate one, and we only pass in the first three parameters, we're going to use false for the is unique parameter value. They can only do these default values for parameters at the end of the parameter list. If we put it here on the second one, like string name equals quote, this wouldn't work because you couldn't really tell which parameter is missing if it's in the middle. You can only tell which parameter is missing at the end, and we can fill in the default values there. Then of course on line 15, we set the is unique property value to the parameter value, and then on line 20, in our clone function, we're going to pass in the is unique property from the object we're cloning from into the game item constructor for the object we're cloning into. Next, we'll go into the weapon class. And in the weapon class, it's a child of game item. And one of the things it does in the weapon constructor is it calls the base constructor, the game item constructor. I've added in this new fourth parameter when it calls the game item constructor to pass in true. So for every weapon, it's going to pass in true as the is unique because we want weapons to be unique. We're eventually going to put diamonds on them to make them do special things, or maybe put poison on them to make them do more damage. So we want all weapons to be unique. We don't need to worry about modifying the weapons clone function because it's always going to create a new weapon, which is going to call the base constructor, which is always going to pass in true. So all weapons are always going to be true. If we create armor, which we might also want to have enchantable, we'll probably do the same type of structure there. We'll have a new armor class that will be inherited from game item and its is unique value is going to be true. Now we're going to create a new class called grouped inventory item. This is kind of like the old item quantity class we have where we have the item ID and a quantity, except we're going to store a complete item a complete game item as a property and the quantity. We want to store the whole game item object as a property because we're going to want some values from that. We're going to want the name, the price. In the future, we may want some other information from game item as we expand, but that's why we're storing the full item instead of just the item ID. And this is a pretty standard class. It's like most of our others. It inherits from base notification class. We have our item property on line eight, which has a underscore item as a backing variable. And we have the quantity property on line 18 with the underscore quantity as its backing variable. And then lines 28 through 32, we've got grouped inventory item, the constructor, which just takes in an item and a quantity and sets the property values. We need to have this class use the base notification class because Within the player's inventory, the quantity is going to increase or decrease as they get new items or sell items or turn in items for quest. So we need the on property changed events to notify the UI that the player's inventory or the trader's inventory has increased or decreased. Next, we'll go into the living entity class that makes the base class that we just created for players, monsters, and traders, because that's where all the inventory is going to be handled. And we're going to create a new property that is a, an observable collection of grouped inventory items, and we're going to call it grouped inventory. 
This is here on line 56. So right now we have line 54, the regular inventory that has one line for every object. The grouped inventory property on line 56 is going to hold the grouped inventory items. So we can have one object for each unique item or one object with a different quantity for each non-unique item. And in line 64, in our living entity constructor, we initialize the grouped inventory property with an observable collection of grouped inventory items so that we've got something we can add to and remove from. Now we need to make changes to the add item to inventory function on line 67 and the remove item from inventory function on line 88. Before the add item to inventory just did this line that's on 69, it added the item to the inventory property and then it did the property change notification on line 85. The new lines are the ones from 71 to 83. This is where we look to see if the item we're adding is unique. If it is, we're going to run the code on line 73. We'll add a new grouped inventory item with the passed in item and a quantity of one to the grouped inventory property. So this is going to be, if the player gets a new sword, it's going to be unique. We'll create a new grouped inventory item with that sword and a quantity of one, add it to the grouped inventory. And then that's what we're eventually going to have the UI look at. If the item is not unique, then we need to see if this is the first one of those items that the player has, or if they already have that item. And then we just want to increase the quantity. So line 77 through 80, that's where we check to see if there are any grouped inventory items inside the grouped inventory property where the item type ID matches the item type ID of the item passed in, the item we're adding. If there are not, we've got the exclamation here for not, then we're going to add a new grouped inventory item to the property. We'll put in the property. So let's say this is a snake skin and the player doesn't have any other snake skins. We're going to create a new grouped inventory item with snake skin and a quantity of zero and add that to the grouped inventory property. We're adding that with a quantity of zero because we're always going to run line 82 where we then go and look to find the first item inside grouped inventory with the matching item ID and we increase its quantity. So the first time through the first time the player gets a snake skin, we're going to say they don't already have a snake skin on line 77. So we're going to add a snake skin with a quantity of zero and then on line 82, we're going to increment the quantity from zero to one. If they already had a snake skin, let's say they had five snake skins. We're not going to run line 79 because we already have that item, but we're going to find the snake skin group inventory item object, and we're going to increase his quantity by one. Then on line 88, we're going to do a similar type of thing for the remove item from inventory. Before we just had the code on line 90 to remove it from the inventory property and 107 where we raised the property changed event. The new lines are from 92 through 105. On 92, we're going to get the first item from the grouped inventory property where the item matches the passed in item, the item we want to remove. On 95, we check to see if it actually did get anything. We want to say what we got here on line 92, is it null or did we actually get an object? It should probably always have an object, but it's a good idea to double check here. So if we do have the object, we're going to look and see, does that object have a quantity of one? If it's a unique item like a sword, we're always going to have a quantity of one because unique items, when we add them to the inventory are always going to be added with a quantity of one. We're never going to increment their quantity. So if the grouped inventory item to remove has a quantity of one, it's either unique or it's not unique, but there's only one of them. So let's say the player has a one snake skin, then we're going to completely remove that item from the grouped inventory property. That's because if it's a unique item and we're removing it, we don't need it anymore. If it's a non-unique item like a snake skin and they had a quantity of one, 
we don't need to show snake skin with a quantity of zero. We can just remove that item. Otherwise, so if it's a non-unique item and the quantity is greater than one, so let's say they had five snake skins, we're going to run the else on line 101 and then the line 103, we're going to decrease the quantity by one. I don't really like having a grouped inventory property and an inventory property. This is kind of duplication, but right now I don't want to start pulling out the inventory property. We've got some other things we're going to need to do to get that to work well. So for now, we're just going to handle grouping the inventory by adding this other property. Now that we have the models all updated to handle grouped inventory items, we need to change the UI to actually use this new grouped inventory property and display that. So we'll go into mainwindow.xaml and on line 168, we have our data grid that shows the current player's inventory. Before, we used to say binding current player.inventory because we were binding to the inventory property. We need to change that to grouped inventory. Down in the data grids columns, because grouped inventory is a grouped inventory item object, its property here is item. So to get to the item's name, we have to set the description binding to item.name. Before this used to be, be name because we were putting game items in the inventory, but now we need to follow the path down from the grouped inventory item, its item property, and then the name property on the item property. Same with the price. We need to say item.price now. And then on lines 175 through 178, I added a new data grid text column with the quantity property. And we don't need to put item here because this quantity is a property of the grouped inventory item class. That one right there on line 18 of grouped inventory item. So now the player's inventory is going to show the grouped inventory. It will have the name, the quantity, and the price. Then we go into tradescreen.xaml. Do the same type of thing for the two data grids there, the player's inventory and the trader's inventory. So here on line 40, we've changed it to current player dot grouped inventory as the item source. If we look down on 48 through 59, we've got the same type of thing with the columns. We now say item dot name for the description, item dot price for the price, and then we've added this quantity column. Then if we go down to the trader's inventory, on line 75, we change the item source to current trader dot grouped inventory. Then on lines 83 through 94, we change the data grid text columns to use the new bindings. I've also changed the button text. So when we were buying and selling items, down here on buying on line 100, I've changed it from buy to buy one. And if we go up to the button on line 63 through 65, I've changed that from sell to sell one. So that way we, the player knows they're just selling one snake skin if they've got 10. And the final step is to go into the trade screen .cs because the item source for the data grid is now a grouped inventory item instead of a game item. We need to change the code a little bit there. In the on-click cell of tradescreen.xaml.cs, we used to get the game item on line 21. Now we're getting the grouped inventory item that was sent in. So we cast the data context of the sender as grouped inventory item. And then when we change the player's gold or add the item to the trader's inventory or remove it from the player's inventory, we need to now use grouped inventory item dot item and then the dot price property for the gold and then just the item object for adding and removing it from the inventory. Same type of thing on the on click buy on line 34 and 35. We're now getting the sender data context as a grouped inventory item. And then we need to check 
the item dot price. Before we were just checking the price off of the game item object. Now it's the item of the grouped inventory items price. So let's run the game and check to make sure that it all works. We'll go fight a few snakes. Okay, see here we received one snake fang and one snake skin, and the snake fang and snake skin incremented instead of adding two new lines. We'll fight a few more. See that the player's inventory keeps incrementing. If we go to a trader, we see that the player's inventory has the consolidated, the grouped inventory item with the quantities and the trader's inventory has its grouped items with the quantity. If we buy the pointy stick from the trader, the player's inventory now has two pointy sticks because pointy sticks are weapons and they're unique. So they should have two separate lines. And if we sell a snake fang to the trader, we see that a new line got added to the trader's inventory and the quantity decreased for the player's inventory. We'll sell some more. And now the player's inventory is completely sold out of snake fangs. So it doesn't have a line in there anymore. So it looks like everything's working. I'll include a link to the support page in the description under, underneath the video. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you have any questions, please leave a comment there and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks.